Good morning, friends. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the replay if you're catching me on the replay. And if you're catching me live, good morning and thanks for joining on this Sunday morning. I hope you've all had a wonderful week and you're getting ready for another one. I uh, decided I would take a few minutes to jump on here and do something a little bit different and see if anybody had any questions I can answer. Um, so we're just going to kind of go with it and see how things go. I'm going to grab a sip of my coffee and give it a second for Facebook to do notifications and go ahead and type hello when you're coming into the chat so that I know that you're with me. All right, it looks like Facebook is finally doing the notification, so we're going to have a few minutes of lag, and that's all right. Good morning, Miss Donnelly. Thanks for joining. Good morning, Miss Ann. Thanks for joining. I'm trying to get my tablet set up so that I can see any comments or questions, but Facebook is running a little bit behind, more so than normal. We never know what we're going to get with Facebook. Hopefully it's not going to kick me off today. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, well I can see that we are up. I have a black screen, so I can't see anything that you guys are seeing, but I can see your comments. Ooh, Donna Lee's been working in the yard. Goodness, it is a wet 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 mess here in Texas so there is no yard work anytime soon except for maybe cleaning up from storms it has been a mess here I'm gonna move you guys over just a little bit and I thought I would do something um, different for me so <clears throat> I am gonna use this transfer I'm also gonna use the small Halloween icons uh, I think I'm gonna do the witches in uh, I'm going to actually just use the broom part of this transfer and I'm going to be doing some Halloween decorations. So I have these frames. This one is a six by four and I have pre-cut some chalkboard material um, that is uh, the most interesting thing. I found this at a party supplier. Now for those of you who don't know, I have been an event coordinator for, oh goodness, uh, I guess it's 28 years now, and I owned my own venue for quite a long time, and so I have hookups within um, the community for different places to go and get wholesale products for weddings and parties and events, and one of the places that I go to had these paper placemats that are actually chalkboard, and they're nine and a half by 13.375 inches. Um, they are very thick. Well, okay, I say that. They're thicker than cardstock, thicker than poster board. They are coated, so they have the same kind of coating on them um, that our chalkboards do. That's kind of a smooth, almost like a powder coat over the top of it. And you can cut these down because basically they are made of paper. So I was able to get an eight pack of these for $4.50. A good friend of mine has told me that you can find these at Party City and other party supply places. Um, in the area where they keep uh, things like, hmm, how do we say, it's decor stuff, but it's actually for your food service. So they have brown paper style and they have chalkboard style and they have placemats and tabletop setups, table cards, um, so you can write what your different menu is, things like that. So I took that and I cut it down to a lot of different sizes. And let's see, I've got four frames here. I've got a five by seven. This is a four by six. This is a little two and a half by three and a half. And then I have a four by four that I'm going to do the spooky on. Um, and I have decided to keep things very simple. I'm going to do everything today in white. So um, 
just going to go with the white. And I think the most difficult one that I'm going to have is actually this 5 by 7 because I want to put this witch's broom in there. So I'm going to do it a little different than I normally would. It's going to be kind of sideways. And I think I may go ahead and put some, uh, some little like sparkly details in there but we'll come back to that i'm going to put it on here sideways like this so it's going to cut some of the broom off but i want this really fantastic handle to show up in my um on my piece of chalkboard paper so let's see what we can do here oh my puppy is it's cut she's like um she's like our children you get on the phone or you go to do a video and she decides it's time to talk to you she hears me talking and so uh she wants to be talking too so you guys might hear her whining at you in the background that's about as vocal as she gets for most days so let's see i think i can actually do that a little more upright because I'm not too worried about what it cuts off on the bottom and if you guys are typing questions in I see some capital letters thank you so much for the capital letters I will come back to questions um, here in just a few minutes I just want to get things started with this and then we'll come back and see what questions you guys got yeah oh goodness Donna Lee got her package yesterday yay awesome awesome um, oh goodness, you had some Hurricane Michael mess. I'm so sorry to hear that. So I'm going to go over um, and just chalk this up really, really quickly. I have a feeling that my chalk paste might actually be a little thinner than it needs to be. I combined several... Um, several jars of chalk paste that I had and uh, one of them was very very thin like we had hit it with water a few too many times and then the other ones were a bit dried out so I was hoping that they would kind of cancel each other out but this feels a little on the thin side I'm gonna say so we'll see how it does okay I'm gonna come in and pull this off oh yeah that's gonna work great okay i'm gonna set my broom aside so that i can clean it here in a few minutes and we're gonna set this aside and let it dry while we go on to the next one so i'm gonna do this little beware not a fan of the actual beware words but um, I think it's going to be the cutest thing as far as getting my, um, I want the jack-o'-lantern face on there, so that's what I'm mostly concerned with. I think we'll just skip the wording altogether and just put the jack-o'-lantern face in there. I'm just going to eyeball that. There we go. And... Grab some chalk paste over here on the side. I've got it stirred up. I've got it stirred to the point that I have bubbles. I stirred and stirred and stirred to combine those jars. That's why I say I think it's probably a little on the thin side. But as long as I don't have air bubbles in my transfer, it should work great. Fantastic. All right, let's peel this up and see how we did. Okay, that is going to work fabulous. Shows a little bit of the distressing. That's actually part of the transfer, so I love that. Set that aside. Okay, what's next? All right, let's do spooky. Let's do the spooky. We're just going to blow through these super, super fast. Fuzzing it up as I go on my little um, lint-free towel. I'm using a flower sack today for my towel. All right. A little bit of chalk paste. A 
I have mostly pumpkins, different styles of pumpkins, um, but I have these frames that I really wanted to go out with my pumpkins, and I've got a little bit of floral decor, um, and so I really wanted these to go with it, but I needed something to go in the frames. I got a great deal on them over at Hobby Lobby, but I didn't want them just to sit empty, and I started to grab my... Um, grab pictures of my kids and put them in there but I didn't have any that were specifically fall and I didn't want to just put like oh here's wedding pictures and here's graduation pictures that didn't feel like it went uh with the fall theme I'm going for today so I said well we'll just wait and see all right we're gonna let these guys dry and I'm gonna pull this out and I'm going to use this witch right here um, to do yeah I'm going to use this witch down here it is a layered witch but I um, I'm not interested in doing multiple colors so I'm just going to do that one and I'm going to go ahead and cut out this uh, I don't know sparkle we'll call it a sparkle right here because I think I'm going to add that in around my broom once that dries. If I was doing the witch in multiple colors, I'd go ahead and do a couple layers, but since I'm just going to do one, I think this is going to be the layer for me. So there's that. Cut these little sparkles out. This is a tiny one. This is going to be a good one to put on a transfer backer sheet that is different than this little tiny thing because I can see this getting lost. <clears throat> I might put both of them on the same uh, on the same transfer backer sheet. Just look at how tiny that is. Let's go ahead and write on them. So we know which side's the back, and pull the frames. We'll let that sit while I put it. Come over here and put sparkle. Set this little guy off to the side. So how are y'all doing this week while I'm getting this stuff ready? Tell me how your week has gone. Let's see, I'm going to... Okay, let's see. Hopefully we're still there. It's telling me we're having technical difficulties. Facebook is giving me the spinning wheel. Hopefully we are still live. All right, questions. Anne asked, I have to heat set the ink on canvas, but do I have to heat set paste on canvas? You don't really have to heat set ink or um, paste on canvas. You want to do heat setting when you're going to be washing it. So if it was like a canvas bag, um, a canvas tote kind of thing, yes, absolutely, because you're going to want to heat set that so that it becomes washable. But if you're talking about a canvas panel, um, I happen to have one right here, so let me just grab it. If you're talking about a canvas like this, a white canvas panel or canvas board, which uh, does, doesn't have the opening, it's just a solid sheet. If you're talking about doing that, if you don't need to be able to clean it, you're never going to get it wet, you don't have to worry about heat setting that. If you, um, if you want to heat set it, you certainly can. Um, I would suggest that you turn it over and do it from the back so that you don't have to worry about this area um, going in on you and stretching your canvas out if you are going to heat set. But you don't have to heat set chalk ever, ever, ever. Um, actually, I don't know how chalk would react to being heat set other than being dried with a heat tool, which is not really the same thing. So I hope that actually helps in your situation. I can't wait to see what you've made on Canvas. All right, let's get her chalked up. I had this paste sitting out for about five minutes before I started the video, the live feed. Um, 
open and I thought oh goodness now it's going to end up being too dry and sure enough it is not it's still a little bit on the wet side but as long as we have no air bubbles should be good all right let's see how our witch turned out oh yes fabulous Love her. that is so so cute so stinking cute oh my goodness maybe i should put the beware on our witch let's see i've got a little fuzz from the transfer i haven't seen that before but that's all right um did you see the contest on may may's team page has she um has she done the has she announced the winner yet today i think i'm expecting her to do winners later today um but she did announce two new contests for this month. One is based on your point volume, and one is based on, um, for anybody who is not ordering, or even if you are ordering, it's based on doing artwork. So it's an artwork contest um, where you can win some prizes, and it's a point volume. So if you have sales or if you are ordering, which I know several of you have ordered and used your 50% off coupons, um, you are entered in for every $100 in point value, you get one entry, and the prize is going to be $100 in uh, Chalk Couture product. So that is a fantastic prize. I'm very excited about that. We were talking about it last night, as a matter of fact. Okay, let's see. Do I want to put sparkles on my witch, or I want it around the broom, I think. So we're going to do those little sparkles. I'm going to get my scissors and do these other little sparkles. They are just so tiny, guys. They're so, so cute. All right. Got that cut out. Fuzz it up, and I'm just going to turn it over and put an X on the back for that one. Since it is even smaller, I do believe. Okay, and how I'm going to do these is um, I'm going to put them on here. I'm going to chalk them up, and then I'm going to move them, and chalk them up, and move them, and chalk them up, and move them. So we'll see. Hopefully with this paste I won't have any um, any mess ups. Whenever you're moving them it can it, it's always a chance but you know if it doesn't turn out how I want it to I can just wipe it off and do it again. Okay so let's lift maybe. <laughs> Should have left a little corner. I want to actually put that there. Should have left a corner up on this or folded it on itself because I'm afraid I'm going to smear just trying to pick it up. Voila! Okay, I'm going to give it a turn and put it down here. And a little bit of chalk paste. And, uh oh, lift that up. Oh, come on, guy. Good deal. And I'm going to. Give it another turn and go a little closer into my witch's room. And we'll lift this one up. Had to blow some of that debris off of there and go up here at an angle. And I'm going to smooth it down as I spread my paste out. I think that might be 
all for this one. Let's see. I think that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. Some little sparkles. I've got a little spot of paste right here that I'm going to clean up with a Q-tip. I'll just do that right now. I'm going to spray some water on my mat, drop a Q-tip in the little drop of water just so it's barely wet and clean that right up. Use the dry end and dry it. And that's all there is to that. Super, super simple. I like it. I don't know. I'm thinking I might want, I might even want some more on there. Let's see that one. Is this one the one that has the little triangle? It is. I want to go a little closer in and do one more right here. Oh, I'm, I'm tempting fate. I thought I was done with no, with no oopsies, and so I'm tempting fate. <laughs> oh, there we go. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. All right, so these guys just have to dry, and then I'm going to put them in my four frames. And they will be good to go. I am so happy to get that done. Yay! So what would you think? Is that something that you guys think you'd like to try um, using a different kind of surface like that? This is different than paper. Now it is very similar to chalkboard vinyl and you can chalk on chalkboard vinyl, which of course um, Cricut sells chalkboard vinyl, so does Darius. Um, and you can find that in several different places. But I really, really thought that this uh, chalkboard placemats was just a brilliant way to go. I was really excited to try it out and I'm going to do the truck as well. Um, I want to do the truck and put it up for uh, for fall and then I'm going to put in the back of the truck after after fall I'm going to come in I'm going to change it a little bit and in the back of the truck I'm going to add um, yeah, Christmas tree. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> a Christmas tree. So let's see. I have just a few minutes. I could probably do the truck real quick. What do you guys think? Do you want to see me do the truck? Give me a thumbs up if you want to see the truck. If not, we'll save it for another um, for another live stream. Facebook has a really long delay today. I got a thumbs up. Okay. I'm really happy I got my holiday truck transfer so I can do it. Yes, please. Okay. So, Donnelly, you're going to start with the base that is the buffalo plaid, I do believe. I haven't actually done the buffalo plaid yet for the truck, so I hope I'm not leading you the wrong direction. Um, but in doing the vintage truck, you want to start with the base. Just check and see if, um, if it doesn't have all of the parts that this one does. Do this one first, if that makes sense which mine is in a um, in a big envelope somewhere, so I can't grab it. Otherwise, I would grab it for you and we would just see. I'm just eyeballing this. Now, there is a lot of open space on this one, and I have used this transfer a lot. It has been well fuzzed up, let me tell you. Um, so you want to make sure that you have all of your air bubbles out. That's super, super important. And for this one, because I know that I'm going to come back and be doing stuff with it for my um, holiday decor, I'm going to go ahead and use tie teal. So let me give my tie teal a quick stir. This is very similar to what couture teal is now. This is just the older version. It's a little bit on the dry side, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a squirt with my water bottle and stir, stir, stir. 
it's a little bit grainy I see now so I know I need to keep stirring it until I get a nice smooth consistency that is um, very close to sour cream or yogurt that's looking better all right so let me grab a squeegee so that I can do the right one Get the lid off to the side. All right, so I'm going to put my tie teal all in the open spaces. And then I'm going to use my squeegee and make sure that I'm pretty much at a 90 degree angle and go over that open space of the design. That's all we care about is where the design is. Oh, I see an air bubble. I hope that I smoothed it out with the squeegee as I pulled that over. If not, I'm going to have some area to clean up. You want to keep your squeegee about a 90 degree angle and that will help you to actually pull the product across the area and get a very small amount. I see another air bubble. Goodness, goodness. Here I thought that I had smoothed it down so well, but they sneak up on you. There's no need to go edge to edge outside of the design. You just need to be, oh, I've got a little color on there. I don't know where that came from. A little extra color, but it was on the um, it was on the transfer part, not on the silk screen part. So I think we're okay on the vinyl. I'm going to do my wheels. I want them to also be the same color. Okay, smooth out any areas. Now I'm going to have to see, I may have a little area to fix because of that air bubble. So let's see how we did. Mm, let me go back and just go right over the top. Oh, that's better. All right. So there we have the base layer. I'm going to grab my heat gun and go ahead and give this a, um, actually before I do that, I'm going to put my teal away, my tie teal so it doesn't get too dried out. This is definitely one of my favorite colors and I'm using it uh, quite a bit for my holiday stuff so I want to make sure it doesn't dry out on me. And I've got a little spot right here where there was an air bubble. I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to clean it up with a um, Q-tip. squirt of water. Just clean that right up while I'm letting this paper come back to room temperature. Now I saw on another on another page today um, somebody was talking about doing layering and another person was talking about um, using a transfer with multiple people using the same transfer so that you're able to do make and takes with extra without having to have a lot of extra transfers and one of the recommendations was to use a hair dryer on your um, design transfer to dry it between cleaning it from one person to the other and I'm just going to tell you to use extreme caution with that because the the transfers are not meant to be heated um, so like when you're going to go when after you've heated your surface if you've used an air dryer a hair dryer or a heat tool you need to make sure that it is room temperature before you put another layer on top of it otherwise you could damage your actual design transfer, your silk screen, and nobody wants to do that. This is an investment for us, and we want to get as many uses out of them as we can. So 
you want to be really careful when doing that. Um, I know some people have hair dryers that uh, have an air setting only that have no heat, and you could possibly do that. I just tell you to use extreme caution with that. I'm going to err on the side of caution and not use a hair dryer because I don't I don't want to take a chance. And I would hate to be showing you guys with a hair dryer and have somebody think that they could use. Um, high heat on their design transfer to dry it and then have it be ruined. I would just feel terrible if that happened. So I'm going to err on the side of caution with that. But you guys do what you feel is best. All right. I wish that they had little registration marks for our truck like they do for so many of the other transfers now. Um, because it is a little bit tricky to line it all up. But it's okay if it's a little bit off because it is a vintage truck and it is, you know, supposed to be a little bit distressed and whatnot. So I'm just giving it a little press with my fingers lightly. And I'm going to grab that white. And I'm going to get another multi tool. So my other one is pretty dried up. And I'm doing white over the top of this um, so that then when I do my buffalo plaid, I've got some options of what I want to do for the buffalo plaid. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all of this in white. Get some on there. Okay, I'm going to grab another squeegee out of my little bucket of tools and move my paste around. Even though this is a little bit on the inside, as far as my paste goes, it's still a little on the thin side. You do want to work quickly because you don't want it to dry in your silk screen. All of your areas. Now, I don't think that I want to do the palette in the back of the truck, so I'm just going to skip it. That's because I plan to put a Christmas tree in the back of this truck later on in the month. Or in November, maybe. And when I get ready to do that, I don't want to have to erase the palette. So I'm just going to do the edge of the pickup truck. I'm going to put the excess right back in the jar because I have a lot of excess with this one. Actually, see a little, little tiny area at the top of the pickup truck that I didn't get, so let me try to try to get it. I don't expect this one to be perfect and that's okay, um, especially this area because I'm going to be putting a Christmas tree in the back of it, so I know that it's going to be well covered up when I do it the next time. There's all my excess. I have all my lines knocked down. I'm not worried about the little bit that I went off the transfer there. And voila! There we go. I set my transfer to the side. There's my little Q-tip cleanup for that. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun, and I see one area that looks like we had an air bubble, and so I'll be cleaning that up as well. extra cleanup. Just 
just taking my damp Q-tip. This is not sopping wet by any means. Um, because I'm going to do a really small space right here, I want to make sure that it doesn't have any fuzzies sticking out of it. So I'm just twirling it between my fingers. And I'm just going to go right over the top and see if it picks it up. If it doesn't pick it up, I'm not going to stress about it. We'll do inside the window. Oh yeah, the window part is cleaning up beautifully. I'm trying to go up and down so that I just get the white line area. Clean up the lines. that are supposed to be black. Here we go. Got a little spot right here on the tire and between the tire. And that's that. Easy peasy. I really, really love doing these layered um, projects with Chalk Couture. They, they make it really easy and especially on some of the bigger ones that now have the registration marks so that you can line everything out up without thinking. Um, the Vintage Christmas Tree is one of those. It goes really, really well. Um, it goes together really well and it's just spectacular when it's finished. So I love doing that. Now um, for the Buffalo plaid one, I believe that you do either this base layer or you do the plaid base layer first and then you do the second layer is the top part of the truck and the shine and you'll have to decide what you're going to be putting in the back of the truck so you know whether or not you want to add your palette to the back or whether you want it to be blank like this one is. So those are the only little things you have to think about when you're putting that together. Hope you guys like that. Han, I cannot wait to see your sparkle. I love that you did one with snowflakes and uh, extra stars around it. That sounds fantastic. I can't wait to see that. Make sure you post it in your album. I've gone online to the group and I've created an album for several people. Um, I got a little sidetracked this morning. I had had something come up and I couldn't keep doing it for everybody. So if you don't see your name, go ahead and hit that plus button and create yourself an album, even if you don't have a photo to put in it right now, because you can always do that later. And just go ahead and name it your name. It can be photos. It can be, um, mine would be Michelle Shrek's photos, Michelle Shrek creations, whatever the case may be, um, whatever you want it to be, special stuff, whatever, and then you've got a place to load your photos every time and they will show up on the wall when you add photos to your album, but it'll be an easy place for you to go back and find them later, especially when we're doing fun contests like this month. We're also doing an artwork contest in my group, um, as well as a point value contest, and we're doing um, a video contest. So if anybody does a video, whether you do it live or recorded, Facebook or on YouTube, as long as you share the link to your video in that post, there's a place for you to share your link. As long as you put your link there, you're entered to win a prize. So easy peasy. I love that we have some uh, great support that we can give great prizes away. And our upline does fantastic prizes as well. So you've got May May, you've got Melody Lane, you've got Ken Hess, Mandy Leahy, and even Brenda Durant. If you're a member of their group and you're participating in their Facebook group, then you're eligible to win a prize. So that's a fantastic thing. All right, guys, if y'all don't have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up for today. I've got an appointment coming up at 1230, so I need to wrap up and get on with the rest of my day. I hope you guys are going to have a wonderful day and look forward to seeing you again later this week. Have a fabulous, fabulous week. Just make it the best you can make it. Create something beautiful for yourself. Create something in your life, whether it's cooking or gardening or chalking or any kind of art that you like to do. Just get out there and create something for yourself today. And I always wrap up by saying, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and happy crafting. <music>